Hi, how are you doing? It's Dave Eaton, and today I am here with you to just go over a few fitness activities uh, for you to do in your home. Uh, when I owned a gym, I had a lot of people that would come in and they would they would want to get fit, they would want to join our program, but they felt like they needed like 30 days of something to do at home so that they wouldn't feel like they were going to die or feel completely inadequate. And this was a workout that I created for them. Um, I also have a download of the entire fitness program that uh, you also could download if you wish. I can put a link to it. Um, but it's just a simple eight minute little workout at home followed up with a 20 minute walk. And so I'm gonna go through each of the movements. It's quite simple and explain how it works. So in our world, we call this an eight minute AMRAP. AMRAP stands for as many rounds as possible in eight minutes. And so this is what you're gonna do. And the reason why I like doing workouts like this is because it's trackable. You can start off and maybe uh, week one, you're able to do three rounds of it, but by week four, you're able to do five rounds. So you're obviously able to see that you've progressed. And so this workout consists of just one, two, three, four, five different movements. Uh, the first one is called an air squat. And the reason why this is an important movement is because we get up in and out of chairs all day long. And a lot of times uh, people end up in actually assisted living homes is because they can't get off the toilet or because they can't get out of a chair. And so it is a very functional movement to train. I'll show it from the front and then I'll also turn and show it from the side. So in air squat, you're gonna have your feet shoulders width apart, toes pointed out slightly, and you're going to go down below parallel or, or at parallel and then back up again. And this is what it looks like from the front, okay? The reason why we go below parallel is because if you were to just do this, that puts a lot of pressure on just your quads, and then you'll begin to get maybe some knee pain because you're not actually engaging the hamstrings. And so it's not until you get below parallel that you actually use the hamstrings. So the movement from behind, or from the side, I'll show you this way, it begins with the hips going back first, sitting down, and then back up. Okay, opening up all the way, those hip flexors at the top. So again, here's a couple of movements. Okay, so that's called an air squat. So in the, in the workout, the first movement is 10 air squats. And then from there, now let me quickly go back. If you need to uh, scale this, let's say that's kind of difficult for you. You could easily, if you're just at a, maybe at a, even more beginner stage, you could even do it at your couch and you're actually going to sit down on your couch and get back up, okay? It's that easy, okay? The second movement is one that's referred to as kind of a scary movement. It's called a deadlift. And the reason why it's scary is a lot of people are like, oh, I got back pains, I have back problems. Well, in reality, we deadlift things every day, like right now. I'm noticing like one of my kids left a Tootsie Roll wrapper on the ground. In order for me to pick it up, I need to deadlift. I need to be able to pick it up, okay? So, a deadlift, it looks like this. Have you ever gone up to your front door and went to stick your keys in and drop your keys and you gotta pick them up? Well, if you don't train deadlift properly, people hurt their backs, throw out their backs because they're not doing the movement properly. A deadlift looks like this, you, you go, with the hips back till you get to about the knee. My hands are at my knees. And then from there, I bend my knee and I pick something up. It's that simple, okay? Now, if you want to, again, this is an at-home workout. You can even grab your broom from the front. I'll show you. You go with your hips till you the bar get to the broom gets to your knees. And then from there, you're just bending the knees to the middle of the shin and then back up the way you came. I'll show you from the side. Hips go back to the knee, bend the knees. Straighten the knees, hips go forward, okay? So you'll do 10 of these. If you need to, you can even exaggerate a little bit as a two-phase movement. What I don't want people doing is this, okay? That's not a dead left. That's called trying to hurt yourself. Okay, so a neat thing about deadlifts is when you do deadlifts right, you know how to do them, you'll even find yourself doing simple, goofy things like me. When I go to tie my shoe, 
I actually am deadlifting down to my shoe. Okay, so it is a very functional movement. It's not one that you need to be afraid of. Okay, so I definitely encourage uh, you to have a, a good understanding of what that is. So that's a deadlift. So you're gonna do 10 air squats, 10 deadlifts. Uh, next movement is 10 push ups. Now, a lot of people I just freaked out by saying a push up. Don't, don't worry with this movement. Yeah, a typical push up, and I don't know if the video can see me, maybe Liz can move, is you go all the way down to the ground, all the way back up. Another way that you can scale this would be for you to get in the planked position, drop your knees, you're so, you're in the exact same position, drop your knees, and now your chest is going all the way down and all the way up. Exact same movement. Do not abbreviate this movement by doing this. You're actually eliminating, eliminating a lot of the muscle groups. If you need to, you could even scale it, maybe you wanna back up a bit, and do it at your couch where you get on your knees, your hips are in a straight line, and you're just doing it to your couch, okay? I had my grandfather, when I put him through this workout, he actually does it at his kitchen counter. He goes up to his kitchen counter at his sink, he presses all the way till the sink counter comes to his chest, and then he presses out. So many variations of a push-up, there's no reason why we can't figure out one that works for you. So you'll do 10 push-ups. The next one is 10 toe touches. So this looks like this. You're on the ground. <laughs> Try to beat where you can see me. Arms go all the way up. Sit up and touch your toes. 10 of these. Okay. Um, there are a variety of ways that you can scale that. For some people, well, I actually had my grandfather try to do this and I realized I didn't, I wasn't thinking. I didn't realize how hard it was for an 80 year old man to get off the ground, up and down. Um, so for him, I actually had him sit in a, in a chair and just bring his knees up. So he's still activating his core, okay? So any variation where you can just get the core activating. If you're able to lay on the ground and get up, uh, reasonably easily, you know, easily, then I prefer that you do it the way I uh, demonstrated it. And then the last movement is called a pass-through. It's not really an exercise as much as it is a stretch. Basically what you're gonna do is you can take your broom, stick it right here at your hips with your grip, just basically kind of as wide as possible, and you're just going to go all the way around, oops, this one's kind of short for me, all the way around up and over, and then back again. Okay, um, if that's too difficult, find a variation of that that works. For me, I like that because it helps open up the pec muscle, helps open up the shoulder, and it keeps the range of motion good in our shoulders, okay? Um, so you'll do 10 of those. So the workout for eight minutes, and you can track this on a piece of paper. I have a little tracking chart I'll upload to the group, if, uh, or it's on the download, either way. Um, You'll do 10 of each of those movements. You get through all 10, that's 50 reps, right? You're, not, you're gonna be able to do more than, more than one round in eight minutes by the end of the 30 days. I recommend that you do this at least five times a week. You can just do this in your home. But immediately after the eight minutes is up, don't get yourself all settled and take a nap. I want you to set a timer on your watch for 10 minutes, and I want you to walk out your front door and either jog for 10 minutes away from your home, and then you're gonna jog back, so it's a total of 20 minutes. So you're gonna jog away from your home until your timer goes off, and then you're gonna jog back. Now, it may not be jogging for you, maybe walking, power walking, that's fine. I just want you to set yourself a small timer and go away and then come back. As you get more and more fit, I encourage people to uh, in increase your speed in intervals, so maybe for the 10, you know, for the full 20 minutes, you may go for two minutes, kind of quick, a minute rest. Two minutes quick, a minute rest. That's how I prefer. But again, this is super simple starting from the beginning. Uh, I just want you to get out and do a little bit of cardio for 20 minutes. And that is my basically 28 minute workout that I encourage that everybody do a minimum of 
you know, realistically, no less than three times a week, preferably five times a week. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, put a link to the download so that if you're interested, you can go ahead and download it and you can actually see it. Um, have a good day. Thanks.